Yeah, and like literally I was a zombie all day. But she made great grades. <laughs> Hello, landing crew, and welcome to today's video. I asked you guys what is a video that I haven't done but you wanted me to do. Danielle's ADHD story and just kind of her talking about it was one of them. I'm just here to do like the mom part because there's some things that Danielle doesn't remember because she was really, really small. So when Danielle was a itty bitty cute toddler. Picture here. <laughs> When Daniel was a toddler, like two, three, four, I didn't really notice that she was more hyperactive than other kids her age. Once she started kindergarten, I think that's when I started to realize that she was struggling a lot, a lot with reading. Now she was my first one, so I kind of thought it was normal at first, but then when after talking to other moms, I thought maybe it's not. We got her through kindergarten. First grade was a huge issue. Her entire first grade year, I basically tried natural methods. I had suggestions, oh, try this supplement, try that supplement, change her diet, don't let her have red dye, don't let her have sugar. Do you remember in school where you couldn't have sugar? Do you remember that? Is that why? Yes. Is that why you wouldn't let me have sugar? Again, Danielle wasn't super hyperactive or anything like that, but it was just a concentrating problem to where it was significantly affecting her grades. It was. Like, yeah, like, like she was getting like time. D's and F's and it was just an issue. And then in second grade, I finally buckled down, decided to go get you medication. So I took her to the pediatrician. It was a super, a super easy appointment, nothing crazy. They just had the teacher fill something out. Both teachers, first and second grade, agreed with me that she definitely had some attention problems. I think we started off with Vyvanse. That was the first medication. It worked fantastic. It was like night and day with her. Like she just got great grades. Yeah. And like literally I was a zombie all day. Yeah. I hate that medicine. But she made great grades. <laughs> And I think that's the thing with medication. It does have some not so great side effects, but sometimes the benefits outweigh the side effects. It really did help Danielle and it really did make a huge difference in what yeah. she did. And what it allowed her to do was to be able to learn and concentrate. Then as she got older, she was also able to learn some coping skills as well. But when I got off that medicine, I was so happy. We took her off of it halfway through her sixth grade year. She showed me in sixth grade that she had initiative. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about ADHD, especially if you have the concentration problem, is you have to work so much harder than everyone yeah. else just to get where everyone else is. I remember in history, I'd have to read the same page like twice. When I do tests, I have to read it twice. When I go to the questions, I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? She's been doing so good in school, but I feel like she's had to work like three times harder than everyone else to get those grades. She still has other issues that affect her. Like you're really forgetful, right? Yeah, I'm really, really forgetful. Like, okay, so the other day, I had science homework and I even set a reminder on my phone about the science homework. I started doing it and I got distracted, right? So then I like, you know, fell asleep and I woke up in the morning, totally forgot about it. I like even had my book out and I was like, what's this out for, right? And I get in my science class. And you are so my daughter right now. <laughs> I get into science class and, he, and he's like saying, oh yeah, well, I'm giving back all your books. So I'm like, Oh no! <laughs> so this is kind of what happens is I will tell her, hey Danielle, you need to go clean the bathroom or clean the kitchen whatever her chore is. And she always says, okay, can I do it later? And we used to fall for that. We we did. And some of it I think is on purpose, but some of it I do think that what happens is she gets caught up in something else and it just completely slips her mind and then it never gets done. So Lonnie and I have a rule that if we want something like a chore or a task done, she has to do it right then and there. What are some things that you do to help you with your homework and like staying on task and things like that? One reminders, they help me a lot like on my phone. There were quite a few times that we tried taking her off of medicine. It made her sick to her stomach. It, it made her lose weight. It just didn't make her feel good. It also made it where it was harder to sleep at night. There were some times she did have to take clonidine to kind of offset it. I've been on ADHD meds as a kid and I know how horrible it makes you feel. So I felt bad for her, but at the same time, if it's affecting her grades, I mean, yeah. something has to happen. I remember in fourth grade, we got me off it because my teacher in fourth grade, she was like concerned. And so we were like, we'll try getting it off. So I went off for one month. Never like, yeah, 
I remember that. No. So if you're watching this video and yourself or your child is still on meds and you're like, there's no way I could take them off of meds right now, that's okay. As I said, I felt like she was on it until she was at a maturity level and everyone reaches this level at different points. I've known some people to take their kids off in third, fourth grade and it'd be fine, but everyone reaches a different maturity point where I felt like she could use her own coping skills to do it. Yeah, because I'm an artistic person. If I like draw things and stuff or like if I like make it colorful or do things like that, I, it's easier for me to remember what I'm writing down. And another good tip is to not wait to do things like Daniel. <laughs> the problem is, is the more you wait, even if it's, oh, I'll do that in half an hour. So many things can happen from now to half an hour that can distract you and pull you away yeah. and then you completely forget about what Usually, it is. Usually, if I have homework that I know I won't be able to do the next day, I do it as soon as I go home. If I don't, I'm gonna be get distracted. I'm going to end up doing something else. It's going to slip my mind and then, oh, now I have an F. <laughs> so now we are going to answer all of your questions about Dania. I mean, we aren't. She is because they're probably for her, but let's go. There she goes, putting on lip gloss for the third time in 20 minutes. Oh. That lip gloss is really expensive to be applying that often. So we got your questions. The first one is, when was I diagnosed with ADHD? And that was... Seven. Second. Then what's the hardest thing about ADHD? The hardest thing about ADHD is remembering. It's so horrible. I can't remember anything. Probably paying attention to. And then my bedtime routine, I don't really have one. I kind of just sit and stare at the ceiling till I fall asleep. But I feel like out of all the kids, you, you have the best bedtime routine. Like I don't have to tell yeah. you to go to sleep and things like that. Like you naturally just do it on your own. Like, have I ever felt like my teacher purposely sought you out in school? Not singled out, but my teachers usually would like have one-on-ones with me to help me focus. Like they'll have like little side things with me. That was in elementary school. Now in high school, they don't really do that. You have to come in after school. Does black coffee really help a person with ADHD? Coffee for me is more to keep me awake in the mornings. But Lonnie states that coffee does help him calm down. But I feel like Lonnie Jr., he has the more hyperactivity. And if you're, you're kind of confused like why someone would ask that, they say that individuals with ADHD, if you have like a lot of caffeine, like from like a soda or coffee or something, it does the opposite and calms them down. So Danielle doesn't, again, have the hyperactivity piece, but Lonnie Jr. does. So yeah. I, I kind of wonder if that whole theory goes with hyperactivity and not necessarily like concentration problems. Okay, what activity slash task do you think you struggle the most with because of ADHD? I struggle so much in reading, even though I write for fun, it ain't reading. See, in school, I'm good at keeping my attention and everything because, you know, I've learned little tricks. But at home, my brain's like, you're at home, you get to rest. I feel like at home, it's more like wide open. You have more distractions to, to pull you. Mm -hmm. School, you're there for learning. You're at a desk. Like it's, it's, it's a more structured environment kind of thing. So. Yeah. So I would say homework and reading and writing. How do I stay organized and on top of all my schoolwork? As I said before, I use reminders. I make sure to write everything down, and I mean everything. And I have a, my own planner, and I write things in there, and I kind of kept the habit of like checking it every day. Is it hard for you to focus when other people are talking? Yes. I'm in a friend group of 10 people, and like there's like five different conversations going on. That's why I'm so quiet. They're like always like, why are you so quiet? Like you're always like kind of like sigh, and I'm like, I don't know which conversation to join. Because you guys are overwhelming me. <laughs> it's hard for me to be in like group messenger chats for the same reason because it's just hard. There's like three people talking. I do better on the tests, the like state tests or whatever because regular tests people are talking and they don't really care with state tests you're forced to be quiet and I can't concentrate when people are constantly talking even if it's the smallest talk what people don't understand is like <laughs> when you are looking at something and you're already having problems concentrating like you can hear like a whistle over there and it's like what's what's that what's that mm -hmm. unless you've had to deal with it you don't understand like how easily distracted you become kind of thing. Have I ever been bullied because of my ADHD? Um, in sixth grade, it was Maddie. She was not a nice girl. Four, fifth, and sixth were the years I was being bullied. In fourth and fifth, I was on my medicine. So yeah. they didn't know. Does ADHD have an impact on life outside of school for you? 
definitely. It affects my sleep. It affects what, like, how, what I do. I'll plan like what to do throughout the day and I'll do none of it. Absolutely none of it. Planning doesn't go for me. I talked about this in the other video, but I'm 33 years old and it, it still affects my life very, very much. So it's something you just, you learn coping skills, but it doesn't ever go away. <laughs> do I take ADHD medicine? No, I do not. I stopped in the middle of sixth grade. All right, so this question is, do you have a 504 plan for it? I'm going to get her on a 504 plan, but it's actually not for her ADHD. We can throw that in there if they want to, but it's mainly for her EOE. If you are new and you don't know, Danielle has EOE, which is basically just this rare disorder that causes her to have issues with her throat and it causes a bunch of other issues and sometimes she gets sick from it. She has to like miss a lot of school for like doctor appointments and things like that. So we want a 504 plan to kind of accommodate for that. High school is very fast paced. I failed the test because I wasn't there the day before yeah. and they were like, oh yeah, you can take it next week or something so yeah. you can study for it. A 504 plan is usually more for medical, like if there's a medical reason the EOE consists of being a medical reason in that situation like the test thing they would accommodate to that and be like okay well since everyone had yesterday t to study you can have today to study and then tomorrow you will test kind of thing so it provides accommodations and also makes it where she has to have like a lot of absences or go home early that it it, it doesn't count against her kind of thing i constantly feel nauseous like today i felt like so nauseous this morning I wanted to stay home, but I've spent so much time home. Are teachers willing to give you the accommodations you need? Not all of them. My main courses are the ones that I care about. Oh, that's a good that's question. A good yeah, that's a very good question, Anastasia. Way to go, girl. Is ADHD something I'm ashamed about? And no. I've never, ever been ashamed of ADHD. It's also because I kind of thought it was a normal. Lonnie has ADHD and you oh. have ADHD. If it's all you've known, it's like when I would hang out with some friends that would have kids that were like calmer and stuff. I just didn't know that kids were supposed to be that calm and relaxed and chill. And I was like, oh. So I just thought, oh, hyperactivity, it's fine. Because I didn't ask my, my friends in elementary school, hey, what's your grades? I hope that guy's answered everything. I will not be doing one on Lonnie Jr. just because his is very simple. Like he didn't get on medicine. He's just hyperactive and all over the place. Thank you for watching this a wonderful video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see Danielle in <laughs> more videos with her new makeup on, give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the red subscribe button. We will see you guys next time. Tomorrow. Next time. Tomorrow. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see ya and leave the rest behind. Oh.